Ladies and gentlemen, today is August 3rd, 2016, and this is the Kane Kill Show, episode 304, where we learn to be better artists. My name is Ken Lafferty, and I would like to welcome you to another show. Today, we are going to be jumping back into the Riven piece, and we're going to be talking about subtlety in faces, subtlety in places, and subtlety in outer spaces. Coming to you this summer. Okay, I don't but seriously, we're going to be talking about subtlety in faces, because after I released this picture... Uh, last week, and that reminds me, this is episode two in the series, so if you want to go back and see how we got to this point, namely this point, right, oh, sorry, namely the point where her face looks really simple, right there, then just go ahead and click on this picture. It'll take you back a week, you can see how we got to this point, talking about laying out uh, our lines, composition and stuff, but what we're talking about specifically today is subtlety in faces, and that is going from this point to this point, point. and you might notice uh, with this handy little animation that I made for you, you can tell that there's actually not that much happening. There's a lot of subtle little changes that we're doing to the face. And yet the final picture looks really nice to us. It looks really, really nice. And so I'm gonna be going over that with you guys today, doing a little bit more line sculpting just to really drive the point home. And then we're gonna have some fun with that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we get into the tutorial, we need to take a stroll down a very special place. And that is of course the lovely lane. So come with me on a magical journey to uh, this link right here, tinyurl slash cancalpano, then you'll be uh, prompted with this amazing secret link, secret link called see all. And then you click on that and be ready to be dazzled by the amazing artwork that has been submitted by you guys out there. And for those of you who haven't done this yet, go here, like the page, submit your art, and get featured on the show like that Mewtwo going on by. Really cool. And of course, thank you to everyone who submitted their art to the Cancal Facebook. Makes my day every time. You guys are so awesome. So awesome! I should have looked at the camera when I did that. It'll look way cool. So awesome! So keep being awesome. All right. I noticed that I, I've been like I'm trying to pull my attention away from here. Like when I'm looking over this way, I'm looking at myself in the the preview thing on XSplit, and I shouldn't be doing that, right? I'm not talking to myself. I'm not looking at myself. What am I looking at? I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. All right. But I mean, I mean, you probably didn't really care about that. But. Regardless. <laughs> so you see, now you know. Now you know whenever I'm looking over here. That's what I'm looking at. Okay, so let's get into the tutorial. Let's chuck our stylus over here. And let's go ahead and get started. Let's get started, ladies and gentlemen. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to kill this timeline. Die timeline. Die layers that we use to make that animation. And let's go ahead and pull this up and let's get started. Okay. So, uh, needless to say, the story from last week went that uh, we ended here, right? And I really liked this because we were talking about how to capture emotion. This was our original sketch. And we were talking about things like, hey, what creates, what simplicity creates an expression? And how do we translate that over to something like this, right? Where we're starting to get more of a realistic looking face. However, after that episode ended, I wanted to spend a little bit more time because I wasn't completely satisfied with it. I wasn't completely satisfied with the way that Riven's face looked. I felt like it was a step in the right direction, but it wasn't exactly what I wanted. So I went in there and then I went to this point, right? Went to this point and then eventually got to this point. And this was the face that I was looking for. This is what I was hoping to get to last week. So I figured, hey, you know what's a good thing to talk about today? The subtleties, right? What actually got us from this point to this point? And it might baffle you. It may just baffle you. In fact, actually, I should probably, I should probably keep that the way that it was. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, I actually like these layers better. I, I like these layers a lot better. It's easier to see the differences between all of them. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and just duplicate this layer. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare these back and forth. And then I'm going to show you guys real time what I did to kind of fix the face or rather add more detail to it, make it look more, uh, make it more, have more character to it, add some subtleties to it, and uh, just overall make it look really nice, right? So I'm gonna do that real time. But let's go ahead and first study what the differences are, okay? So let's go ahead and pull out our nice red note-taking device. And the first thing I want to direct your guys' attention to is going to be the eyes. It's gonna be the eyes. 
Dang it. I totally hit the wrong button. Oh, we need to kill this again. Go away. Go away. Swatches, what are you doing here? Get out of here. Nobody likes you. Nobody. Does anyone ever use swatches? I don't think so. Okay. So anyway. So the different main differences are we've got like a couple little shading, shading things in here, right? Specifically around the eyes. We ended up moving this whole eye shape over to the left. We ended up moving it to the left. Uh, we added some more detail to the nose, right? And so let's go ahead and compare these two. So see those differences that were already taking shape? Uh, a very, very minor thing, but it's worth pointing out, is within the eye, do you notice how we have this shape right here? And then the pupil is actually over to the side. Do you notice how there's more space on the right side than on the left side? This has to do with a theory called, well, it's not necessarily a theory, it's just kind of the way your iris works. When you're looking away from something, or the way that your eye is constructed, is it's sort of like a satellite dish, right? So wherever your eyeball is looking, right, your pupil is going to move to the inside, to the, towards the inside of your eye, and it's going to create an illusion like that, right? That's why we have, uh, that's why we have it looking like that. What the heck did I do? What did I do? Okay, there we go. All right, so that's why the iris is moving to the side. We added that into the mix, right? Same thing here. It's very, very subtle, but see how the iris is wide here and then short on the other side? It's a really cool effect. I highly recommend you guys try that out for yourselves. Um, another thing that we did was, let's see here. What else happened? Okay, so another really important thing that happened here was I would say that the chin, the chin actually moved up. We moved the jawline up and the chin out. But most importantly, I wanna show you guys this right here. So your chin has a tendency to go up and then there's gonna be this little bit of, well, this is basically your muzzle, right? There's skin that actually sticks out and it constructs your lips, your lip area, right? Some people's are bigger than others, but in general, it is gonna stick out just a tiny bit. You wanna think of it almost like this, this circle that kinda of comes off, right? And look at this. The circle is going to meet up like at the edge of the nose, right? And when you smile, that's where the line, that's where your smile line goes. And that's because that's where your muzzle is, your muzzle. So you wanna think about this as almost like a very, very subtle sphere. Not that uh, Riven is turning into Hannibal Lecter, but rather it is a sphere in space, right? So it has a little bit of geometry coming off of the face, okay? And that is being reflected, most importantly, right? Because we didn't draw a lot of, we didn't draw obviously like the edge of the nose and the smile line coming down, right? Because then that automatically makes Riven look like an old lady and she isn't necessarily supposed to be that old. She's not Anna from, she's not Anna from Overwatch, okay? This is completely different IP. We're not mixing IPs today, okay? We're sticking with LOL with the laws, okay? So that's why that little piece of skin or that little, there's that change in geometry on the face, okay? And then we go up and then we have the cheek coming in and then we have the eyeball sticking off, right? So all those little tiny things are adding up, okay? So let's go ahead and keep those notes and let's begin on this part of the uh, sketch, okay? So let's go ahead and add those things in. I'll do those things for you real time. All right, cool, because if we haven't stalled enough already, <laughs> so let's get to it. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, duplicate this just with Control J, and I'm going to move this, oh, just in case you missed what I did there, I selected everything, then hit Control J, which gives us a copy of whatever it is we're working with. And we're working on one layer, so you know, you're gonna have like the white background and all that stuff. Um, not necessarily a big problem, not necessarily a big problem. The point is, is that we have the eye, okay? We have the Oculus eye, and now we're gonna move it. Okay, we duplicated it, we're gonna move it over a little bit. Now what this is doing is it's making the nose, it's making her nose taller, right? Or making her nose deeper. Because too close, right? See how now the eyes just, they feel like they're too far forward in the face. There's too much space specifically happening uh, over in this area, and let me use a, Blue will be the bad color, okay? So look at how much space is here, right? Her ear is like over here, and there's just too much space that's happening in this area. Um, her eyes are being moved too far forward of the face. We don't necessarily like that. Not for Riven, not for Riven. She needs to have a bit of a deeper nose, right? So let's move this back. But also, the other trap that you wanna stay away from is moving it too far back. And this is the one that I have 
uh, probably the more of a tendency to do. You get the eye going too far back, it's starting to get sucked to the side of the face. The ear has become a black hole and it is now sucking all living life forms into the ear hole. And um, yeah, that's not right, including the eye. So you wanna find that nice, happy medium right about there, okay? Now, uh, the next thing that I did here was I added in some shadow, right? A little bit of shadow here. Now what this represents is a little bit of the eyelid because believe it or not, these characters are actually able to blink. And it's important that you show a little bit of shadow there so that way it represents their eyelid, okay? Their eyelid. Doesn't have to be anything too crazy, but just a little bit of a, a shading or a little bit of shadow and shading will do you good, okay? Let's go ahead and take that iris, move it to the side, right? Because these eyeballs are looking to the side. Okay, and now let's go ahead and add a little bit more detail into this nose, right? One of the things that I really like to do is rather than drawing the nose like this, I like to draw the edge of the nose, like very, very subtly. Notice the value that I'm working with right here. I'm working with a nice, cool, or not cool, subtle gray, okay? Subtle gray. And that is going to add some extra detail to the nose without being too overpowering, right? Don't want to overpower the nose, right? So something like that looks good, right? So that line exists there, but it's a lower contrast. Okay, the next thing that I did was I add a little bit of shading on this side. A little bit of shading on this side. Now this helps to show the other, like the rounding of the nose. Because the nose isn't just a piece of paper. It's not a piece of paper that's sticking off the face. Rather, it has, it has a plane here, right? Let me go ahead and draw that for you, the plane of the nose. So this is the easiest way that I have learned how to draw or how to remember how the planes of the nose work, right? Because everybody knows how to draw this shape, right? You can draw this, but then always think about these little triangles that are gonna stick off. Like you've got this point here, but then there's this triangle that kind of sticks off and then it kind of merges, right? The plane changes when it meets with your eyelid, and you can feel this for yourself. If you follow the edge of your nose, careful not to poke yourself in the eye, right? And then you follow the, your nose down, and then it meets up with your eyelid. And then right here, right, the other side of this triangle is basically where it's intersecting with your cheek, right? It's intersecting with your cheek, and it's going up like this. And that has to do with our planes of the face. And wouldn't you know it, we've done tutorials on the planes of the face, specifically with ribbon in the past. And if you want to go back and see that one, that's an old one. That's a really old one. If you wanna go and check that out in depth, then just go ahead and click on this picture. And you'll go have some fun with that, okay? So that's the basic thing that I would like to think about. You got this flat plane area right here. You got this triangle that sticks off, right? And it almost, hey, look at that. It almost looks like an airplane itself, right? See, these are the wings. And then this is the, you know, look at that. Easy, the planes of the nose. That's how you can remember. All right, so that's what I'm thinking about there. Let's go ahead and continue with this. See, so already we've gone from here to here here to here. Can you see how our face is starting to kind of garner some more detail? We're looking good, looking real good. Okay, so let's go ahead and just double check everything. Let's see how we're looking over here. Uh, it looks like I added some more darkness to this side as well. Now this helps to, um, again, I, I do this almost, like it's very, very challenging to try to get, oh, that's why that's happening. I had it set to cycle layers. I was like, why is it moving around on my layers like all of a sudden? It's like, I'm literally like brushing my little, um, the little wheel, I forget what it's called. The, the stupid wheel on the tablet that nobody uses, I was brushing it with the, my palm and it's totally messing up my layers. But uh, anyway, a lot of this stuff I do kind of by instinct, right? That's the team I'm on for Pokemon. Uh, <laughs> I do this by instinct, but it really just has to do with values, right? I added some more darkness here and that represents a couple things. That represents the edge of the eye, but it also represents like the darkness of the tear duct, right? It's going in there. There's not a lot of light that's gonna get trapped in this area. So we're gonna have a little bit of darkness in there, right, with the tear duct. Okay, um, but let's go ahead and continue with the shaping of the face, okay? And this is gonna lead into my next theory. Now, whenever you're capturing a character, um, I think that the positions of the face, of the facial features are very important, right? Everybody knows that. But a big thing that I think a lot of people overlook is the outside silhouette, right? The silhouette of the face, specifically the chin, the muzzle area, the cheeks, right? The depth, all that stuff. All these little subtleties around the silhouette of the face are really also going to help to convey 
uh, the subtleties of your character, right? And they're gonna change it a lot because you can look here. There's a, a large difference between this and this. There's a very large difference between those two. Uh, and even more between here and here. Look, I end up moving this whole area, this whole like uh, part going back to her jawline completely moves. It completely moves from here to here. See, so, and notice how it changes the feeling of her face, right? I actually ended up moving her head down too because I realized her forehead, right? This hairline is way too far up. She's looking like Tweety Bird. We don't want to have that. We've got to move the hairline down, move the jaw up a slight bit and see, changes the face, right? Just kind of brings it all together, brings it all together. But we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Let's go back to this one. Let's go back to this part and let's continue with this. Okay, so knowing that, let's go ahead and duplicate our layer, right? Because we're about to make some major changes to this face. And I would hate for you guys to, basically we always control J, duplicate our layers. Whenever we're getting ready to do a, a big change, right? Making a big change to the face and we wanna be able to compare back and forth, right? We wanna be able to look at this, look at that, look at this, look at that. And then ask ourselves, which one is feeling more like ribbon? Which one is feeling more like uh, the way that I want it to? Conveying the proper character, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so after everything I've taught you, you now know that the chin, we're actually gonna pull that chin out just a little bit more. We're gonna pull that chin out just a tad bit more. And then we're going to make sure we are drawing in that muzzle area, right? Keeping that in mind. We're gonna bring this area out just a little bit more, right? We're gonna bring this out just a tad bit more. And then we're gonna get something like this, okay? Now fear not, this looks a little bit weird. This looks a little bit weird, but that's because we haven't drawn in another very important part. And that is the bottom of the lip, right? See just this little, this little bit right here, this little tiny uh, change in value right there really helps to show all right, because you can feel this on your own lips. There's a big plane change that happens just below there. And again, it's all about that subtlety. It's all about that, uh, and I did this multiple times. So here's a good example of how I go about doing this. Because I don't just go in there and I'm just like throw one of these in and then it looks okay. Uh, oftentimes I'll have my fingers on control Z and I'll just kind of like draw in a couple different, uh, like quick little shapes. Try to find, Try to find what I'm looking for trying to find what I'm looking for. Good, I've got that out, got that out. Whew. All right, continuing. So uh, a little value under there goes a long way because the other part of our geometry that we wanna be keeping in mind is this. It is on the lips, you have, of course, everybody knows that lips look like this, right? Sexy lips. You got lips like this, but then there's a plane change that's happening right under here. And this also, again, this is part of the muzzle. Remember the muzzle. Then right here, you have another plane change where basically the chin comes out. So you wanna show that. And obviously this is a very exaggerated version of that, but that's what you wanna keep in mind, okay? And we're representing that with subtle changes. Little tiny shadow shows that there's a plane change there, okay? So, continuing, continuing. Uh, also another small detail that I feel a lot of people overlook is keeping in mind that there's always gonna be a slight little dimple right here. Little dimple on the edges of the lips, right? And little tiny changes in here are going to affect your character by quite a bit. So be very careful with the, with the shape that you choose to represent the lips, okay? And I guess is what I'm trying to get at here. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna put a little bit of blush here just because it always looks nice on the cheeks of the girls. And I'm gonna kind of refine this a little bit more, right? Kind of kicking down those lines just a tad bit. And we're starting to have, look at that, a nicer looking ribbon face. Do you see how adding those subtleties in, now we're starting to have more of the realistic features, right? While still preserving, still preserving the expression that we like from the beginning, okay? So we've gotten to about there, all right? And let's go ahead and Let's go ahead and compare these two because even what I've done here is different. What I've done here is slightly different from here, right? And this is why I really want you guys to feel free with understanding or like don't get so caught up in feeling like you need to make the face perfect the first time, right? I did this kind of, um, like I did many, many iterations on this, right? I was, I was comparing back and forth between this one and this one, right? And then I did another pass where I compared between this one and this one, right? Making subtle changes, 
then going back in and making even more subtle changes and just kind of going back and forth, back and forth. I have myself or asking myself, is this ribbon, right? And I'm doing this also in a very kind of quick state. I'd say I'm doing this kind of quickly. Um, sort of, I guess you could chalk it up to being in the zone because I would say that this face still looks a lot better than this one. But let's examine why. Let's examine why. And then I think we'll end on that. We'll end on that. So I've gotten to this point, and I think this one looks cute. This one looks cute, but I, I feel that this one has still way more expression to it, way more expression. So let's take this one at a time. Let's take this one thing at a time, and let's compare, right? Let's start with the jawline. Let's start with the jawline. Okay, so what's different about the jawline? Not much other than the chin moves up a little bit more. The chin here is very slightly uh, kind of pushed up. I can already see a major change in the uh, in the lips, and we'll get to that in just a second. Okay, so this goes up a little bit more. Uh, how about the edge of the face? Oh, okay, so here's a major thing that's happened. So look at the difference between, remember how I was talking about that silhouette, how important that is? Look at this line right here. Look at how skinny that face is, right? Or how much lower, or what's the word I'm looking for? how not far her cheekbones are sticking out here. And then see how the animation happens, right? It's moved out a lot more. We've given Ribbon a much thicker face, which is okay, right? But it tends to give it a little bit more of a, I don't know, um, what's the word? It makes her definitely look more tough. But I like that Ribbon is sort of like this mixture of daintiness and like savage brutalness. And so for the face, I feel that this one right here, this line, uh, definitely exudes more of her character. So we're gonna go ahead and change that up. We're gonna change that up. We're gonna bring that in, bring that back in to where it belongs, right? Just by doing this, kind of bringing that line in, then kind of painting the other side out. Okay, let's compare those two. Very good. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, now also, I would say that I moved the mouth up ever so slightly on this one. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna make it easy. I'm gonna grab this entire area for myself, control J that, and then we're gonna just use the arrow keys to move our facial features around. This is another really cool trick that I like to do a lot. And that is selecting something, hitting control J, having the mouth on its own layer, and then using the arrow keys to move it up, move it down, and see how it changes the face. You see how that completely changes our character. So too high, it's gonna look a little bit weird. Too low, it's gonna look a little weird. I'm gonna try to find that happy medium. All right, and I think that is gonna be it right there. Cool, awesome. Okay, well, next thing that we're gonna be moving into is our nose. Notice the nose kind of sticks out just a little bit further on this one. Is it a good thing? Actually, I, I like this nose too. I really like that nose as well. So I'm just gonna keep that nose the way it is. Um, it looks like also uh, these values were changed up a little bit more. So this is supposed to be a lighter value right here. And then that darker value, the eyelid, was moved down a little bit, kind of like right there. Yeah, I like that. Also this lip right here, see how the lip ends a little bit earlier? Let's get in there and change that. And there you go. So now you're starting to get a little bit more of the feeling that we like from the other one. You see, still some minor changes, still minor things, but both of these faces look good to me. Uh, it's not necessarily a big deal, not necessarily a big deal. So anyway, so let's compare back to the original one. So from here to here, here to here, everything we've learned today, spacing the facial features, adding a little bit more detail to the nose, uh, putting that shape underneath the lip to show the change in geometry, the importance of the silhouette of the face. All those things are coming together to give us a very similar face, very similar face to the one that we liked, but now we're adding more realistic properties to it, right? And then you kind of get to this one. Also, the hair is really, um, the hair is really defined on this one, so I think that's also helping it. And then right here, we've added in even more subtleties in terms of the just a little bit more darker values in the eyes, uh, kind of changed up the 
the tattoo a little bit, move the hairline down so she doesn't look like Tweety Bird. And uh, actually we ended up moving this entire, like this entire area of the face, we just kind of shrunk down a little bit. Okay, so um, yeah, let's do one more layer where we kind of now get to this stage. Okay, we'll get to this stage now. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna show you guys how I do that real time. So I'm gonna take this brush, right? This is just the same old chalk brush. I'm gonna start just very lightly adding in some darker, uh, just very, very light values, light, light values, right? Underneath the nose, right here, a little bit around the cheeks, right? A little bit around the cheeks looks good. A little bit here. Um, let's go ahead and refine this area of the hair because I feel like just kind of changing this area really helped us out a lot as well. Lower that hairline down a tad bit. And then let's go ahead and shape the face a little bit more because we ended up moving the jawline a little bit further up. Again, this is playing into the fact that we want her to look a little bit more fragile, slightly more fragile, yet it's contrasted with a bit more of like a flattened chin as opposed to coming to a really soft point, right? Instead of doing that, we have a bit, little bit more of a a little bit more of a jagged or squared off chin. So again, all those tiny little things that you can mix together really help to add those subtleties to the face that you're looking for. And it will make you very happy, I'm sure. Okay, so looking good. Yeah, I'm liking that. We ended up also bringing this hair a little bit more forward. So let's go ahead and do that. Yep, added a little bit more. We added some darker values to this eyebrow, also made it a little bit thicker on the edge. And what I'm hoping that you guys are taking away from this more than anything, because obviously you're not gonna be like looking at something that you already did and trying to get to that point. Rather what I'm trying to do is replicate my process, trying to replicate what I did here. That way you guys can um, kind of take the things that I'm talking about, like keeping in mind or the, like my thought process, kind of add that to your work, add that to your own, um, your own process. Okay. Oh, another thing that I did, definitely really cool. I like to put a little bit of shading on the top of the nose. Really helps to show uh, the plain change that's happening there. Makes it look really nice. Um, I ended up kind of condensing the lips also. Made the lips even smaller, right? So something more like this. And made this part just stick up a tad bit more. Just a tad bit more, like that. And I'd say that, that looks pretty good too. So actually looking at both of these faces, I would say I like them both. I really like them both. In fact, I would argue that this nose is better. I like this nose better. And um, yeah, I think that's basically gonna be it. I think, oh, this eye ended up moving back a tad bit more, but actually, you know what? I like this eye a little bit more too. So there you go. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. So I think that is actually really helpful. I think that's actually really helpful. Yes, that's so awesome. Okay, so um, in the meantime, let's go ahead and cast some question catapults. And I'm not gonna mute myself. Never, ever, ever will I mute myself again. Ever, ever. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Time for some questions coming in from the Kane Kale MZ. And if you don't know what that is, then just type in that URL down below, submit your own questions, join the community, and have some fun. All right, but today's question is coming in from Tasted Purple. And he or she is asking about practice. Hi, I would like to ask you all what you think practicing is best, or what you think prioritizing is best. Should you focus on drawing, or should you focus on learning special techniques, like learning how to draw a really good leg, a really sexy leg? Right? Or just drawing whatever you feel like. Excellent question, Taste of Purple. I'll be happy to answer this. Okay, so um, the best way the best way that I can answer this is by going by my own experience. And that is, when I first got into drawing, I was inspired by anime, right? Of course, I was drawing a lot of stuff prior to that. I was just doing like cartoons. I was reading stuff like Garfield and Calvin and Hobbes. And I was always had like this really deep love for comics and just in cartoons. I was watching cartoons every Saturday, right? When you actually had to wake up early in the morning, you can just flip on YouTube, right? Kids don't know anything about those days, right? There was actually a specific time where you had to watch things. Imagine it's like Game of Thrones, 
but instead you were watching Earthworm Jim or Sonic the Hedgehog, right? Very magical times. But I was just so excited about like cartoons and all that stuff, and I just drew those characters. I drew Rocco's Modern Life. I drew Ah Real Monsters. And um, I wasn't thinking about like, hmm, uh, well, what's like the composition of this piece? How do I draw like this leg really well? How do I focus on making this face look realistic? I just drew, like I would literally just kind of copy things early on. I straight up copy things. And then eventually I started learning from that. And then I said, oh, hey, and then I'd make a uh, picture by myself, right? And I'd be like, okay, recalling the things that I learned from copying those pictures, oh, I can now kind of make my own style. I can now make my own picture. And uh, I started drawing anime and all I cared about was drawing the girls. I didn't give a crap about drawing guys. And I did that for years. I did that for years, just going, 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 right? Just drawing anime girls. I wasn't concerned about anatomy necessarily. I wasn't concerned about, here's a major problem, right? This is, this is the thing that we ended up, or this is a problem that I ended up encountering later on. I say it's a problem, but it's actually not really that big of a problem. Okay, so I was drawing uh, anime girls, right? And then, I wanted to start learning how, but all this time I was focusing on drawing big eyes, right? Big eyes, cute girls, trying to study like why, what makes these anime girls actually like nice to look at? Why do I like it? And, um, and that was really fun. I like that stuff. I like studying like uh, all kinds of like aesthetics, right? What makes something pleasing to look at? And um, the whole time I wasn't focusing on uh, elements of design. I had nothing. I had, knew nothing about the freaking small, medium, large technique. I knew nothing about how to make a character look like they were appearing in a 3D space. I knew nothing about perspective, and in a lot of ways, I still know nothing about perspective. I can kind of cheat it, right? I've learned a lot since then, but in a lot of ways, I don't know anything about perspective. And um, and I would sit in my art class, right? And I'd be sitting in, and we were doing like a still life. And I was like, I don't want to do still life. I don't want to draw like this this freaking cow skull and like a pumpkin and like some, like a wadded up rag in the side. Like, I don't want to draw that. I don't want, but my teacher was like, oh, you need to do this. You need to, to impress the AP judges, you need to show that you can draw from life. You should be drawing from life all the time. You should be studying, you should be drawing these spoons, drawing these napkins, drawing like, and I was like, this is so boring. I don't want to do this, right? But a lot of people were arguing that, saying that I should be learning those things. And that's how I want to tie it back into your question, Taste of Purple, is that everybody's going to be telling you what you should be focusing on. Everybody's going to have the best idea about what you should be learning as far as technique wise. But what I found that the best motivation to learn techniques, to learn composition, to learn perspective is when it naturally comes up, is when it naturally comes up in a piece that you want to create. And, uh, and I'll be honest with you, the first time you do it, it's going to look bad. It's going to look like crap. You're going to say, okay, I'm going to do this awesome, I got this amazing idea of this character like at the top of a bell, a bell tower. And she's looking down on this amazing cityscape, right? With all these, like, and the perspective is going to be perfect, right? And it's going to have, like, all these lights and details. And it's going to have, like, this awesome perspective. And then you're going to do it. And you're going to get confused, like, three minutes into it. And you're going to be like, okay, screw this crap. We're going to do something else, right? And, and you're going to fail. You're going to fail miserably. But over time, very slowly, right? You're going to start getting better. You're going to find a book on perspective. Someone's going to teach you something. One of your artist friends who knows how to do what you're trying to do. Uh, do is going to teach you, right? You can ask them and people will teach you. Big secret, right? Find somebody that's better than you and ask them how they're doing, what they're doing. And I'm doing my best to teach you the knowledge that I do. Obviously, I don't know everything. No, wait, scratch that. I do know everything and you should be happy that I'm teaching you how to sculpt your own worlds because I know everything. And, uh, <laughs> but, um, oh shoot, <laughs> where was I going with that? Oh yeah, but learning from people is really good. But the, the main point that I'm trying to get at is that you will find that motivation yourself. Don't try to force yourself to learn stuff because you have to. Um, because to learn, you actually have to want to do it. And it has to do with willpower. Willpower just does not last. You gotta have reasons for what you're doing. You gotta have reasons for what you're wanting to learn and the techniques that you're wanting to master. So, let it naturally come up. Focus on what you like to do, and then when you run into trouble, when you run into something that you have no idea how to do it, then that motivation is there, that reason is there, and you'll go, and you'll learn it, and you'll be awesome! Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, with all that out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and end today's show, but before we go, oh, wrong screen, before we go, I wanna say thank you to my amazing sponsors! Laura Bichu, David Kiel, Matthias Silva, Ilian the Cat, Megan Gwynn, and Ian K. 
Crowell. Oh, as well as our sponsors of the past. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring the show, keeping the lights running at night. You guys are so amazing. I love each and every one of you. If you would like to sponsor the show and or, well, actually all the sponsorship spots are taken. But if you would like to download today's PSD as well as all the other PSDs from the past and just go ahead and click right here. It'll take you over to Patreon. You can support the show, get all the PSDs. I already said all that. But yeah, go do it. Click here. Click here. Go have some fun with that. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me on YouTube. Thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. My name is Ken Lafferty. Hope you got some good value out of this. Don't forget those subtleties. Subtleties in the face. I'll see you guys next week. And until then, you guys take care. See ya.